Today I build a spider spawner farm with four spawners in it. I also build a level 9 boiler for more power and finish off all of the jobs in my snowy area ready to move on to the next phase of this Let's Play. Did someone mention a world download? Let's create. In the last video I built this storage facility. And the idea here is this is an intermediary storage that this train can drop off items to and then they'll get transported from this warehouse over here and to a big storage area over there, which I haven't built yet. But I've kind of run out of a few things. This mesh fence costs quite a lot of industrial line sheet and string and had a reasonable amount of string but then I accidentally made way too many of these mesh fences and now I've got no string left. The other thing I need are these shipping containers but the problem is they require dye and I haven't really got many dyes. Back over at my snowy area I've got a handful of different dyes here but I could really do with a farm to make more and obviously a string farm as well and a string farm shouldn't be too much of a problem because if I go all the way back to my original starter area once upon a time I went looking for spawners and I just happened to find a spider spawner which has been sat here doing absolutely nothing so i'm going to pick it up using the carry on mod take it somewhere and build a string farm i just don't know where i'm going to build it now it would make sense to build it somewhere over at my snowy area because i'm not 100 percent finished with this area yet mainly because most of the interiors of these buildings still need doing so perhaps the internals of one of these buildings is the best place i could build this the problem is they're all very full oh redstone mini redstone thank you very much anyway as i was saying the problem is these are all pretty much full of stuff now this little biodiesel factory I've got going on here in this building is technically surplus to requirements because as much as I plan on using biodiesel in the future even though this thing's absolutely ginormous it's very slow to produce what I need it to produce so I'm gonna have to do it in a much bigger bulk setting somewhere else so I think if I rip all of this out between this area here the area upstairs above it and the area downstairs below it I think that'll be plenty of room to be building a spider farm and probably a die farm as well so I suppose I better get to ripping all of this out which makes me a little bit sad but you know we must progress oh geez my tomatoes are going everywhere we've got tomatoes all over the place mate oh no what have i done oh jeez i've got biodiesel and ethanol everywhere oh, it's a disaster and there we go we've got a whole bunch more space now ready to build the spider spawner but before i do that i've got something else i need to do see you guys in your comments are actually really useful and i'm hoping because of a lot of the comments i got in the last video i can get this machine which is designed to fill up my jetpack fuel tanks is going to be a lot more automated you see i've been trying to use these filters to determine whether or not these fuel tanks are actually full or empty and it turns out that i'm not supposed to use a list filter even though there's a respect data thing on there that says that it will match durability and and other attributes as well but apparently i'm supposed to use these attribute filters and that's just wool and nuggets so let's make a handful of these things and see if i can't fix this system cannot stack what does that mean oh i can oh i changed the stuff here neither of those are what i want I want, I want how full it is. Can I, if I put that one in there instead, the full one, can I? No, the, no. Yeah, th this doesn't look like it's what I need. Now, if I was to put, let's say, my axe in there, you can see there's a whole bunch of different attributes, like is damaged. But for these fueling tanks, they just don't have what I need. So unfortunately, peeps, this attribute filter system's not going to work. I just wasted all my money on them. Oh, jeez. Anyway, that's enough of faffing about with things that don't work. Let's go build a spider spawner. I don't know if there's going to be enough room in here to do this. Hmm, I think I might need to make this one underground. So let's build it down here in the basement instead. If you're enjoying this video, then consider hitting that subscribe button. It only takes a second and it really helps me out. bunch of chain drive across here like that and one just there that should be everything connected to power so that should mean if i cover those up this thing should now work and we shouldn't get any climbing up the walls because they should die before they can yes get chance to and then we can really minimize the chance of that happening by adding in a speed controller and putting those saws on as fast as it'll go which apparently is over really that's over no oh, well there is a lot of saws there i guess well, right it turns out i can't get it actually any faster than it already is which means our power station must be pretty much and capacity what's well, not a problem however is we've already got 15 string well that's not very much and also it would be really nice if this little system got a spider rise and the only way i can really do that is to do what we did over at the blaze spawner and use a looting sword on a deployer and that's easy enough for blazes because we can route their paths with lava and water and things like that to get them where we want them to go it's not however quite so easy with spiders because spiders like to climb up walls however i would like to do a little bit of creative testing so over in 
in my test world, as we know, spiders like to climb walls, and I don't know whether something like this would work. Now, this is a whole bunch of encased fans, which will use a crazy amount of SU, but in theory, it should stop spiders crawling up the walls, and it should push them towards this deployer, which if I switch this over, is going to use a diamond sword in order to get the drops for us. Now, the problem is, when I did my little animal farm, the fans didn't affect anything that was pathfinding in the opposite direction, so I'm a little bit concerned that this is not only going to use a ridiculous amount of power, it's also probably not going to work. But there's only one way to find out, so let's do this. Can they crawl up the walls? We could actually have belts running down the walls, something a little bit like that, pushing the spiders down and then belts across the bottom. The only problem with that is, in a recent video, I looked at all the things that were most laggy in the game, and encased fans weren't particularly laggy, whereas belts were very laggy. And there you go, you see, those spiders are fighting against those fans, but eventually they make it. And if that's the case, I can probably reduce the number of fans in here drastically to save is a little bit of power. <laughs> Joining back into the server, it looks like all of my things have stopped running, which can only mean we've totally run out of power. Now I could go around and turn things off one by one at a time. The other thing I can do is make my way back down into the basement and build a secondary power station down here. But what I can do now is use straws in what the monkeys is that machine? What's a rolling mill? And that way I don't need to use a mechanical arm to feed the blaze burners. I can just feed it in directly with pumps. Not that I can plug it into anything. Oh, my power. Is my power back on? Huh. These are running and now all those are running again. What? Okay, well, we still need more power. All right, where am I going to plug this rolling mill in? There. Oh, now I've run out of power again. And for now, let's just disconnect our new system. There we go. Okay, rolling mill, how do you work? I guess I'm going to need bamboo. I've got one bamboo. I must have more bamboo than that. Jeez. Okay, fine. Make more bamboo, mate. And I guess I just throw it on this rolling machine. I do. Just chuck it on. There we go. 20 straws. Everyone can have a straw. There you go. That makes you all look kind of... <laughs> You've got little hats on. Oh, amazing. Hmm. I don't know if I've got enough room here. Okay, in that case, I'm going to have to go a bit further down before we start going up. Okay, pipes for all of these guys. Hose pulley all the way down in the lava. Let's have an infinite water source on this side. And I think we should probably have a couple of pumps going in here just to make sure we've got plenty of water. And there we go. We now have a level 9 boiler. It's only just there on heat, but this should be self-sufficient now because I've added a bunch of water wheels here to basically pump in the water and pump in the lava. And now we're generating another 147,000 SU, which is half the amount of my whole power station. So the way I'm going to do this then is to basically leave my power station connected to that half of the factory area, which is all of this stuff over here. And then our spider spawner and all of this other factory things are all going to be powered by our new system. And that means this power station has still got over 116,000 SU left. And the other one now has 60,000 left. So that's good. Excellent. Which means I can get back to this spider farm. And there we go. We now have all of the systems in place. All of the fans are blowing in the right directions. And the good thing is, if I put into glass above, you don't get any of the particle effects, which is good for frames per second. And now currently, that deployer is just going to punch all of the spiders to death. So we need to get it a sword. And you you guys in the comments told me that if I put a mending sword in, the deployer will mend itself. And the sword I've got here is my best sword, and I don't think it's true, but I'm going to try it. It's fully mended at this moment in time. If I pop a barrel on there and throw that sword in it, that should go into the deployer. And we can keep our eye on it for a little while and see whether or not it loses its durability. But it's definitely working. And we're getting all sorts of things up here, which is fantastic. And we're getting a whole bunch more spring than we did before. And while there is a little bit of light leaking in there, I don't think it's enough to affect the spawner, so that's good. Why oh, has it suddenly gone dark? Ah, well, you see, a lot of the time when I'm recording, I'm using this brightness mod so that it doesn't look awful for you guys on YouTube. But it can be a little bit of a problem when I need to see what the light levels are like. I'm coming underneath, check on the sword. It's not fully mended anymore. It has taken some damage. I don't think I want to leave it with my amazing sword. <laughs> You can make a super enchanting system and have the... I know, I know, I'm going to be doing it soon. And now that we've got the spider farm in place, we're going to need to build a flower farm. Unfortunately for me, we're in a meadow biome, so we should get a good range of flowers. That said, we're going to need a lot of bone meal to grow them, and this isn't providing us any bone meal because it's a spider farm. However, back over at Hill Valley, once again, we have my slime generating farm, and that runs off skeleton spawners. And there's only one spawner in there, and that generates more bone meal 
deal than I can keep up with. And that's just using swords, not even a looting sword. And I don't really want to pump a load of that bone meal all the way over to the other area just so that we can pinch a bit of it for a flower farm because we're going to need a lot. That means I could really do with another skeleton spawner. And it just so happens that when I was checking out this area for our new storage system, using a little bit of cheesy free cam, I may have happened to have come across a bunch of spawners down here. This one's spiders and this one's skeletons. There's another one down here, which is zombies. And rotten flesh is pretty useful in create. So I think I can double up our spider spawner as well as turning it into a bone and a rotten flesh farm. And with the magic of waypoints, I can now see them all underground, which is very handy. All I've got to do is dig. Okay, so that's our spider one sorted. Just put that there for a second. And let's go get the skeleton one. Here we go. Wait a minute, there's another spider one. I'm going to be string rich. Oh, it's in the deep dark. Oh, I've come to... This is spider as well. I've come to the wrong one. Oh, jeez. So now I've got three more spider ones. Yeah, here we go. Hey, zombie friend. Well, that's a lot of spawners to squeeze into that little area there. I don't think I'm going to fit them all in. It's not big enough, but I'll get as many as I can in. And that just leaves room for probably one more, which is going to be skeletons, which can go there, and they should be able to get past there, yes, but we're not going to have room for zombies. So I guess we can save zombies for another time. But here we go. It's working. It'd be nice if the skeletons got pushed by the fans, but they don't seem to be. Now, another thing we're going to need to filter out of here is going to be bows and armor, because that's going to clog up the system. And that should be easy enough. I need a flint and steel. Another list builder and another brass funnel. Put that on there, turn that the white ray round, and now that's going to dump everything that we don't want. We just need to get those skeletons pushed across a bit quicker. See, they're trying to shoot the deployer, which means they're backing off from it, and they're backing off against the power of the fan. But I should be able to deal with that with a couple of belts. And there we go, with those belts at the front there, that should move all of those skeletons to the front into the sword. And I think I might need some more deployers in here because those guys are not going anywhere despite the fans and despite the belts. Put those all into attack mode. And they don't need swords because they'll still hurt the entities if they just happen to get stuck there just by punching them. Okay, I think I fixed it. I also think we've got way too many mobs in there because I broke it, but it's fine now. It should catch up. Well, I've been AFK here for a little while and I've also made a couple of changes which is now turning all of our bones, which we've got loads of, into bone meal just via this little contraption here. As you can see, we've already got over 15,000 string, a whole bunch of XP and a whole bunch of other stuff. And I've even had to put an overflow here for all the other junk that we get through that I can't filter out because the filter's full. But this thing's running really, really well, and that means we've now got enough bone meal to make this flower farm. And over in this creative test world, this is the area we've got to play with inside of this meadow, which is, believe it or not, where my ski resort used to be. This is what it used to look like so i'm thinking something like this might work we've got a little harvester system we've got a storage interface going into what will be our storage drawers we've got a little redstone clock here and with it, when i activate that that sends power through a redstone link which connects to all of these dispensers under here which are being fed bone meal from this chest here and as you can see that works pretty well the only downside here is we're mainly getting yellow and purple flowers and as a result, that's not giving us many dye types. Magenta and yellow and light grey. So this might not be the most ideal place for this farm to be. So we could look at other areas of the world in this area where there's a lot more different types of flowers altogether. Or even over where our new storage building's going to be. There's a whole bunch of flower types around here, but we'd need some pretty massive to harvest all of these. Now this area here, we've got a whole bunch of different things going on. We've got all of these blue and white ones. So we could automate a few different smaller ones to get all of those different types but back on the world there are other ways of getting dyes as well we're already getting a whole bunch of brown dye from crushing our cocoa beans we've got a bunch of beetroot that we can get red dye from and if we crush bone meal we can get light gray dye we can crush charcoal to get black dye and gray dye and we can even crush carrots and cloveries to get orange dye and we got a whole bunch of carrots but the green dyes well we're already producing those here from our sea pickle farm so that's not going to be an issue we got a whole bunch of green and light green dye which really only leaves us with the blues and you can get cyan dye from crushing nether stuff and blue dye from crushing lapis and i've got a bunch of lapis so realistically we can probably make most of the dyes we need already so i've gone around grabbing a few of these travelers backpacks which i get from my farms and i've gone around filling a few of them with the dyes that we need or at least things to turn into dye we've got dandelions carrots a whole bunch of lapis we've got the green dyes we've got charcoal to turn into black dye that needs filling up with bone meal we've got brown dye and cocoa beans and we've got our beetroot but then i heard an explosion and i know what it is this is an 
isn't the first time it's happened, but over at my little spawner farm, there has been a blast. And I don't know how or why, but something ends up exploding. And I think it might be one of these backpack things that we get. The bad news is it means we've lost both of my diamond swords and none of it's come through here. But I guess I needed to come back to Hill Valley to crush a few of these dies anyway. So I might as well make a couple more swords. Now I just need to crush a whole bunch of stuff. I get a lot more dye than I was expecting. I've got a whole chest full of dyes here that don't fit into these backpacks. We've got all of the greens and the yellows. We've got all of the blues. We've got the reds, the orange, the pink, the magenta, the purple, the white dye, all of the brown and the black, the gray and the light gray dye as well. That's every single type of dye just from crushing what I crushed and mixing a few things together. What are you making a dye farm? Yeah, I don't need pop mate. And with these brand new swords back in this system, that should be all good to go now. No more exploding. I've just come back and the zombies in there. So I guess because it's dark down there, things could just spawn inside there. So that's probably how we got a creeper. So I need to make the bottom full of non-spawnable blocks. Otherwise, yeah, that's going to be a big problem. I put tinted glass at the bottom. They shouldn't be able to spawn on that. And coming back to backpacks, it's about time I made another one of these big backpacks because I've got all sorts of stuff in all sorts of places that just don't fit in my normal two backpacks. They're currently absolutely full to the brim with most of the usual create stuff and building blocks. But since I added all of these new create add-ons, there's just not room. So I need a new one. Well, so much for this being useful for carrying all sorts of the new modded stuff because I've absolutely filled it full of other things like all of the different colours of walls and dyes and useful things, a few of the create things that didn't fit in my other backpack, a whole bunch of useful tables and all of my storage drawer stuff, which is really handy, but it still means that I've got chest upon chest of stuff that just doesn't go anywhere that I've crafted up that doesn't fit. But that's fine for now. At least I can get on with building this building and getting everything the way I want it, starting with these containers. And just a few little bits dotted around like this makes all the difference. Right, next pond. Yeah, fishy, fishy, fishy. Okay, flying fish, let's grab a few of these. Now, 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 one, two, three. Four, five. Can I put seagrass on here? I can, so that's good. There we go. We got all of our little fishes in there and a whole bunch more of them in there. And that looks better than it did. It's just not great, is it? It's fine. Next, I need to go inside and deal with these offices because these are no good. Totally empty. I need desks and things. I've got a problem. No, no. Oh, jeez. I just finished this room. Well, there we go. Anyway, this is the little conference room to keep things nice and simple. They've got a whiteboard on there, a box on here because it's a storage place, a bit of paper on the desk and some plants. And in the other little office, we've got a couple of desks with mice and keyboards on and some screens. They've got a whiteboard, a clock as well, which actually tells the time, a cookie jar and some cabinets. And I think that's probably about enough decoration for inside of here. Now what I need to do is get this train to unload its freight into here so that we can then deal with it later on. Now we've got these shipping contacts here which actually act as vaults so we could store a whole bunch of stuff in here but I think we're going to need a bit more space than that we're also going to need to think about how the lorries or trucks if you're from America are going to attach to this and how we're going to get the items out and I don't really want it all on display you see it'd be really easy just to stick a portable storage interface there and one there and have all of the items go into that but I don't want it all to be visible I want I like the look of this and I don't want it clogging up with all of this create stuff so what I think I'm going to do is have the trucks back up to around about this point here and then have those storage interfaces in the floor probably around about that point there so they're hidden and they should be able to come up through the floor and connect to the truck which means it's probably a better idea to actually just store everything underground so having access to a little basement around here is going to be particularly useful for us and I can probably squeeze in a little set of stairs to a basement round about here or even just a hidden ladder would do no one would ever know except me okay so we've got a big old area under here that we need to then get all of the items from those trains all the way over to those storage things there and be able to hold a whole bunch of stuff so i guess i better get digging <laughs> Well, there we go that is a big basement area with our train line over there and our exit point over here so we've got plenty of room to play with it's a little bit of a shame that the roof is mainly dirt but we i guess we can put up with that now the next thing to do is figure out exactly where I want this station to go and I want the train to pull a little bit further forward than this because I'm considering having a fourth carriage at some point in the future. So let's grab our train, kill the fly. Why is there always a fly in my train? And pull this forward and now hopefully, yeah, we could probably get another two containers on the back of this then, but I'm not sure that will fit our other... Oh, Jesus. No, wait, go away! Choo, choo, 
Shoo. There we go. Good. Anyway, right, station. And we'll call this store and send because that's what it's going to be. It's going to store it and then it's going to send it. And I probably should put loads of storage interfaces down here so that any old train can come here and unload. But this is probably going to be realistically the main train that's doing this sort of stuff. And for some reason, its interface is not lined up with this block. But it's at the station. Huh, it's weird. Did I not get the engine lined up right? There we go. We're at the station. Ah, oh, there we go. That kind of works a bit weird. I don't understand why it's off half a block, but there we go. And that means we need to get items out of both of those things and store them somewhere. And I guess the easiest place to store them is just going to be in a big old vault. Okay, those vaults are lined up underneath our chutes. And we're going to empty the items out with smart chutes rather than normal chutes, just because they will do a stack at a time rather than 16 at a time, so it'll unload a whole bunch quicker. The train is now empty of items. Oh, this one's got a bit left. There we go. And then there's room here for another couple of these in case we need another freight container in the future. Now, of course, instead of using belts and stuff to send all of the items down there, I'm going to use storage drawers and controllers because it's a whole bunch less laggy. And I'm kind of hoping I can just use these as pipes and put one on the other end and just have everything filtered through but i don't know no, it's not going to work like that without actually having any drawers in which is a bit of a shame and considering we'd need storage drawers for every single type of item that we're bringing oh no we don't need them for every item we're bringing over we only actually ever need one because they'll be able to go into there and then come out of there there we go look now it's got red sand in it and if i move those the red sands yeah so that works oh nice okay so now all i've got to do is get it up to these things and i'm going to do exactly the same thing so we don't need any power here at all and now we're sending all of the items into those interfaces if i put a couple of these drawers on here then we can have multiple items coming through at once so that's good but in order to really test this we're going to need this train going backwards and forwards picking up all of its items so i need to finish this track off or at least lay a whole bunch more of it well i'm getting a lot of digging done today and as a result my shovel's just about dead but thanks to that lovely spider farm i'm now carrying a whole bunch of nuggets of experience and i believe if i put this shovel if my, in my offhand and give that a munch my shovel gets a little bit repaired each time Yeah, it's a bit rough around the edges, but we now have a big old loop and a big old space here that we can add something in the future. But for right now, I need to get this train with a schedule on it to send it back and forth to the place where it picks up the items to get it to come back here to drop them off. And thanks to my new backpack, I'm carrying a couple of schedules as well as a few leads. So all I need now is a driver. Hello, my new little chicken driver. Right, schedule then. Snowy factory station until there's no cargo in activity for five seconds and then come to the store and send and basically do the same thing. Off you go, little chicken. So off we go. Right, we need to make sure that this train actually ends up linking up with this station. And also think about how it... How's it going to turn around? It's got to go the whole way round there. How's it going to get on the other track? I haven't really thought this through. It obviously thinks it can get there, otherwise it wouldn't be going. And it's going to come... No, no, it's going to... It's going all the way to Hill. <laughs> it's going all the way to Hill Valley to turn around. Oh no, I haven't planned this track out very well at all. I'm, oh no, now we're going to have a disaster because this one's also going to heal that oh geez um uh, oh oh geez um <laughs> I may have made a boo-boo. <laughs> now, I was going to say, this isn't necessarily a major issue having this train coming down to Hill Valley because I actually want a whole bunch of stuff bringing from Hill Valley to our new storage system as well. That said, this, this, oh geez, this is not ideal, is it? And now I got to go as fast as I can to catch up with that other train before it gets back where it's going and goes the wrong way. Yeah, oh, here it is. Now, is it going to actually collect any item? That's the next question. So once it gets here, all of these items should start flowing through into the train. They are all that's wonderful news that's working very well and then once this is full it should head back to the storage area so i need to think of how we can get that train to be facing in the track on that direction coming backwards and forwards from over there now i could just make this track link up with that bit there and then make that go both ways which might not be the worst thing in the world alternatively we could add a t going this way so we can go onto the track that way from here which is probably a better thing to do now will it actually join onto this i don't know if it 
it will. Probably not. No. Oh, geez, that's not going to work. So we can't have a T going that way unless this is totally flat, in which case that all of that track's totally useless. But it does need... Oh, it really does need to be able to go that way. Oh, here we go again. Well, there's a little bit more of a mess going on here, but I think we've fixed it now. The train can now go in all the different directions from here. It can also go up and down this hill if it needs to. So our storage one has got a much more direct route now. So I should be able to give him his schedule back and all should be okay. Little driver, please do the right thing. So at this point, he should come along here and he should go down straight that way if he's got any sense. He is doing and the signals are closing, so that's good. That all seems to be working. And then he should be able to go straight to the station from there. Oh, good. It's working. And a little while later, I have fixed everything included, adding another container to this train. And these are now actually using shipping containers so they can hold a whole bunch more stuff. And underneath the floor, I've removed absolutely everything and put in another storage drawer system which requires no power. And all it has is these item drains from these draw controller slaves to the storage interfaces. And these storage interfaces line up with the container trucks because if I could actually see this thing while it's going, each one of the container trucks now has three portable storage interfaces underneath it so that even if it's slightly offset, it's going to connect. Now, in order to get all of these to fill up nicely, I've added in these item drains to move all of the items down from the fourth one all the way down to the first one. So we'll fill up here first. I've also added on these display links for each one so that if we go all the way over here and we pop up through this temporary hole in the floor, we've got a display board that shows us how full each one is. But I kind of don't want them all to fill into this one. So let's throw another quick item vault down here. And then we can drain all of these items into that one and then have all of these storage controllers just coming from this one. So with a few more item drains, we're now sending everything from all of those with no power at all through to this big old storage vault, which then goes into our draw controller system to be fed out into the trucks that it's going to pick it up later on. And now we can see from our display board that we've got container levels one, two, three, and four that are pretty much empty, or at least they will be once they've transferred all the items. And M stands for main. That's our main one, which is feeding our storage system. So with that all in place now and all of our stuff upstairs decorated, I can consider this little building done, which is good because I've got all the things to do. Starting with fixing this train track so it actually matches the rest of the stuff. And then I've got to head back to the snow area to do some stuff there too. And there we go with a little bit of gravel and some lanterns at the station. I declare this little building complete. Apart from the fact that we don't have anywhere for the lorries to go, this grass bit's not done and we've got a whole bunch of junk over there. But other than that, this little area is complete. Apart from that bit down there and that bit round there and all of those bits round there. But apart from all those bits, this area is complete. However, this tunnel leaves a lot to be desired. And so does this one over at the snowy area. And so does this one, which leads down to Hill Valley. Although this is slightly more complete than the other ones. It just hasn't got an entrance. And they're not the only things in phase two that are not complete. We're still missing a whole bunch of shop fronts. We've got nothing in here, nothing in here, nothing in here, and nothing in any of these ones. And not only that, this train track down here that leads into this end of the tunnel is all still floating over the edge and the cliff needs doing and so does all of this terraforming down here and that's a lot to do considering this is supposed to be my final episode of phase two how am i going to get all of that done and get the video out tomorrow i've also still got to link up all the storage from all of these buildings over to the train station so it can get collected and go to the new area so i think i'm probably going to spend most of the day tomorrow just twiddling about finishing things off here and there and seeing what i can do and if i don't get it all done then i don't get it all done well, progress is slowly being made. I have designed a few of the shop fronts now in this hotel. Not for the want of issues, though, but we'll get into that in a minute. Before, we just had the food shop, but now all of the shop fronts in the town are done. Starting with the Sweet Tooth Candy Store, which has just basically got a whole bunch of candy goods around, a bunch of chopping boards and cookie jars with things like that in. We've got some cookie jars with some liquids in, mainly chocolates. And we've got this little area at the front here with some items on display, a little glass cabinet, a seat ready for a shopkeeper. And that's about it really big old candy cane blocks i've had to craft up a whole bunch of stuff and i think that's probably why i avoid doing interiors because it's just a ridiculous amount of just crafting little bits one or two items here and there but lots of them and that takes a long time and once i finished the sweet tooth shop i went on to one that sells fancy ski stuff or fancy ski gear as the shop's called and this one sells fancy ski boots it also sells fancy ski jackets fancy ski pants and it's even got fancy ski hats using the supplementaries mod with the little hat stands as well as some 
pedestals to show off some more hats. Everything in here is very expensive, as the sign says. And whilst that one is ridiculously expensive, this one is only reasonably overpriced. This is the best second-hand store in town, and it basically sells second-hand stuff. It might be old junk, but it could be your old junk. And it's reasonably overpriced second-hand rubbish. And uh, there really isn't much to say in here, because it's, well, there's not much going on. Back out and back down the street and across the road, there we've got some very interesting little shops going on. We've got the disappointing diesel stuff in reference to the fact that the diesel generators episode was pretty disappointing. And this sells diesel engines, modular diesel engines, and all sorts of diesel engine things. I've also added faucets onto the tanks with the basins so we can actually get the liquids out of there and put it into the basins. And there's another little shop front here with a seat on it. And you can walk straight through this shop into this shop. But we're going to come in from outside. This, of course, is Gloria's Lovely Buns. And this is the shop where you can buy buns. See, there's a big menu on the side with buns written on it. And there's also buns on these chopping boards. There's a little cooking station with more buns on the walls. And there's even a little seating area so you can sit down with your lovely buns, which is lovely. And last but not least, the next shop is my particular favourite. And this is Ebony's Emporium of Exotic Creatures and Whatnot. And if we go in here, this is where our spawner farm is. And I basically gone around with these supplementary cages, collecting all sorts of small animals. And we've decorated this shop so it's like a little bit of a mystery type place. And we've got a rare baby white dragon in here, which is nice to catch. We've also got some more baby dragons here. They're just crows, but shh, baby dragons, honest, mate. Over here, we've got a fly, which is evil incarnate, do not feed. And we've also got some crocodile food, uh, which is basically a lamb, a piglet, and a raccoon. Over at the back of the shop, we've got a monkey sitting on a seat. And there's also room for a shopkeeper to sit behind there as well. And behind here, we have some obscure parrots, which are basically baby chickens and hummingbirds. We've got some wasps from lands far away, which are bees. And I actually caught that one while it was angry, and it stayed angry. I've also put the zombie spawner in here, which I've called the companion cube, because of course, if you put it down, you get a whole bunch of companions spawning from it. And then we've got the very small gorillas, which are a bunch of monkeys. And we've got a rare, rare white woolly gorilla that goes bar, which is a lamb. And then finally, we've got some more raccoons, which are thieving dumpster raiders. And I particularly like this shop. I really like the design of it. I like the eeriness, and I can't wait to get some sort of shopkeeper in here. I'd really like a witch, but I think that could be dangerous. The only thing I don't like is the fact that these vines keep growing. And because these are from the chipped mod, you can stop the glow vines from growing, but you can't stop the other ones from growing, which is a little bit irritating. Anyway, I mentioned problems. What problems have I had? Since updating to the latest version of Create, I've had a whole bunch of problems over the last few episodes. I just haven't really been going on about it. The first problem was that a whole bunch of my gearboxes started going the other way when I updated, which meant a whole bunch of my belts started running backwards, and that meant I lost a whole bunch of items, particularly over here, where I store all of my wood you see the wood from my wood farm comes in here and this was all going in reverse which meant i lost absolutely everything from about this section of storage drawers it all just got flung on the floor below me off the end of the belt and got sucked out of the storage system and that was a bit of a disaster so i brought chuck online to afk over at my wood farm to ensure the trees would grow and i left him afk all night and when i came back in the morning all of this area was just covered in logs because none of it had gone into the storage system and the reason for that is that again since i've updated half of these storage interfaces just keep stopping working and then I have to reconnect them. Ow, ow. So I've had to go around this area and pretty much rip out every single portable storage interface including the ones on the train and put them all back in again but even after doing that some of them still keep breaking down. This train for instance when it comes over here doesn't always drop off its items. Sometimes it looks like it's connected but nothing comes out the chest and this is causing quite a few problems not just here but also we saw the problems earlier with them lining up with the trains and we've had a few of these problems elsewhere as well. This train, for instance, wouldn't pick up anything at all, so I had to completely rebuild that carriage. And similarly, it wouldn't drop anything off over here as well. So all of that AFK time was pretty much just wasted with all of those items just despawning on the floor. But for the last couple of hours or so, it has been running and we have started to accumulate a few logs in here now. But it's a little bit annoying having to keep coming through all of these buildings, checking everything and re-putting everything back together again when I'm trying very hard to get this thing done. Speaking of getting this thing done with all of these shop fronts now done, the only building building in this area that doesn't have any form of decoration is my hotel. All of the rooms in here, apart from this little enchanting room here, the main part of the downstairs area and my workshop are all completely empty. This area up here is completely bare. All of the bedrooms are empty and all of the area upstairs is completely empty as well. So I've got a whole bunch of work to do here, but I'm not going to do this yet because the next thing I'm going to do is get the inside of our tunnel sorted out because that should be relatively easy. Oh, I'm just 
just like Mr. Beardstone. Well, that's both of the tunnels they have decorated, and as you can see, I've used the ugliest blocks in the world. Believe it or not, this isn't all right. It's cobblestone. And why have I used cobblestone for this? Well, because it took millions of blocks and lots of crafting, it's the only thing I had in massive quantity. I've also had to craft up all of these stupid little zinc lamps, which has cost me so much glowstone and zinc, it's unreal. But at least now they look slightly better than they did. And of course, the one going over to our storage area is done as well, and I've done the outside tunnel entrances on both sides as well, so that's good. So next should probably be the hotel interior, right? No. I'm going to finally get this cliff wall sorted so it's not just such an overhanging mess. Well, that's by no means perfect, but it's a whole lot better than it was, and I've added a whole bunch of fences and lanterns down here to keep this track area a little bit better lit, and I've shaped the landscape around here to try and add a little bit more dirt and grass in and smooth it all out, and I've even filled in this corner down here. So that's another big job done. And this tunnel here that leads back to Hill Valley really does need something doing to it, but to be honest with you, this was part of the first phase, so I'm going to leave it as it is and just, you know, use that as a sign to show that I've improved over this next phase. That makes sense. Similarly, another area I'm going to totally ignore is this horrible track that comes down here that we carved out in the last episode, and the reason for that is because, well, it's out of the way, it's not something I'm ever going to be travelling down, and that's a whole bunch of work to do for something that no one's ever going to see. That said, I will get rid of these floating trees, because they're no good. And you could argue, what about the people with the world download? Surely they'll see it. And that's true, because I am going to be putting a world download out as soon as I've finished tidying up this area. And that'll be going out to all of my amazing patrons at any tier for just being there and helping me out through all of my content creation over the years. I just want to say a huge thank you to anyone that's ever supported me in any way at all. So yeah, they'll be getting the world download. Amazing. Right, anyway, I better get things fixed up so it's not too shabby. All right, okay. There's this little area here, which I always intended to cover with snow, so I I guess I should do that now. So there's that little job done. The next pretty nasty job is this bit here. All of this needs leveling out, so I've got all this terrain to shape and sort out. And now that corner looks a whole lot better, and so does all of this track round here with all of these fences and trees and lanterns, and so does that wall over there with that train stuck in it and all of this terrain up here. So does the area around the power station and all of these trees and all of this, and so does all of this all the way up here, including this little hill that I've terraformed. Yeah, I've been really busy. <laughs> Jeez. That's took me a long time but we've now kind of finished off all of the track around the whole of this area i think it looks a whole lot better the only thing is the delorean and the cyber truck have gone missing where could they possibly be you'll have to wait for the download and go and look for them as i'm not telling you so slowly but surely we're getting through all of these jobs now there's not many left to do although i have forgotten half the ones i said i needed to do because i didn't write them down i found another job to do i completely forgot about the original tunnel i dug through this hole in the hill that i then used to fill up my compost fosters with peat and it's just a big old hole that needs filling up and sorting out because it's a big old mess so i'm gonna do that next well that didn't take very long at all that little hole's gone and the tunnel's all covered up and now we've got a snow line coming down from here to here which makes it not look quite so sharp so that's good and with all of these amazing changes now in place there's one last thing that we need to do in this area and that is to somehow get all of the items out of all of these storage systems over to the train station get a train to pick them up and take them over to that store and send place place that we built in the last oh geez we've got a whole bunch of um this is gonna take ages now i really wanted to get our van to do this for us i wanted it to go around all of the different buildings pick up all of the items and drop them off the train station but the problem is it's actually picking items up from the train station and bringing them over here and while that might not seem like a problem it is a bit of a problem see it's very difficult to get these things to extract one item and put something else in and whilst it is possible to use a funnel with a filter on on a storage interface in order to tell it what items you want in or out it don't always work and it often gets confused to the point where the storage interface often doesn't do anything at all. But that's not going to deter me from trying. So first of all, I'm going to disguise that portable storage interface there and put it underneath some snow, just like that. And then I just need to get the items into there. Right, now before I get carried away with all of this, I actually need to rip all of this other stuff out because I need to optimise this and I also need the power for something else. You see, we've got some power here, but I'm going to be using an encased fan to blow the items up into the train. And with a bit of jiggery-pokery, we've now got that fan going at maximum speed, pushing the items up into the train. To get the items out of the train we're now going to need a smart chute because we don't want to take the items out that we're putting in. We may need filtering for sugar cane and slime balls. Next we're going to use our storage drawers in order to get this to work. And none of this will work without an actual storage drawer controller and it also needs a couple of storage drawers in there so the items can actually move through it. And I'm just going to put a handful of those there and that should be everything sorted. Yeah, there we go. Items coming through there and items in here. Fantastic. Oh good. Well that worked then. So now I need to decide which items are 
actually going to send away because of course we don't want to send everything because a lot of this is used for processing. It would be nice if I could come up with a nice easy system to make sure that we only sent half of certain things and we can sort of do that with threshold switches but if we look behind this thing it's already a total mess of threshold switches and I'm probably not going to get many more on there. So I think just to be on the safe side we'll just send the things that we're definitely not going to need. I also want to send all of this which could be quite tricky because this is nowhere near the other things. Finally I'd like to take all of the things we're getting from our spider farm and I'd like to figure out a way to get the limestone out of here. Probably connect that with what we got going on downstairs. No one would ever know. Now currently the van goes over to the farm first and then drops all of the items off here like it is doing into this place. So I don't think it's a good idea to then take items directly out of that place and try and do what we did at the train station. Instead we'll get the van to pull up maybe outside of this building here and it can take from there and there at the same time pulling all of those items out from below. But this is where things are going to get particularly tricky because we need to filter out exactly what items we want sending from all these storage systems. And realistically these filters have not got enough slots for all of those items. Now, I don't know if we can put filters inside of filters. We can, but I don't know if that's actually going to do what I want it to do. So I guess this is a good time to come to the test world and find out. Okay, so we've got a little system here with some dyes in. This is going to get transferred across these item drains into this little system here. And I've got a couple of list filters on me. This one is saying allow red dye. And this one is saying allow blue dye, orange dye, and then the list filter for the red dye. So if I put that in there and spin it round, hopefully they'll all come out. There goes the red dye. And there goes the orange dye. Yes, that worked. But it turns out there weren't actually that many items I need from these three places. So if I combine those together like that and then throw that on there and then open that, those items should start coming out. And they are. The van is now going incredibly quickly because he's got blaze cakes on board, which are classed as a fuel, which is not ideal. But is he dropping those items off here? That's what I want to know. He is. Oh, this is good. Look, we're coming through here. Okay, now I've got him coming to the van spider collect after he's been to the shops. He's stopping here to get all of the stuff from our spider farm and our limestone farm then he'll go off to the gold farm and then he'll go to the car park and drop it all off and believe it or not that's everything from the town that i want him to be doing which just leaves all of the ward over here that i also want moving and this is going to be a lot more tricky because it's much further out of the way that said it's actually directly above where the trains come through so it wouldn't be too difficult to get those items to come down here and actually piped into the train at this point here and i think rather than trying to jam even more stuff into this train that has a ridiculously small item vault. I'm going to get the other train, wherever it is, to do it instead. And with this funnel here, that is our wood farm connected to the train. Use a couple more of these floorboards and no one will ever know. So that's our wood sorted out. Well, fantastic. We're getting most of the stuff done now. Well, we're already getting a whole bunch of items in here and the reason they're in here and not anywhere else is because I haven't fixed the train yet to actually be able to take these items. And rather than getting this train to collect the items from the town, I decided to use this one instead and all of the items are going out of there and into the train which means this train's picking up a whole bunch of stuff wonderful right then that's all of the items now being transported from the town over to the storage area the only problem now is that this storage area is so full it can't accept any more items pretty much everything full so I've added yet another massive container in here to uh, alleviate some of those problems the only problem now is I can't actually read this one on the notice board because the display board's not big enough for another line but that doesn't matter because this one's always going to be pretty much full out you come guys into this one and that means that these can drain off finally and we can actually get some more stuff over at this storage area geez i better get a big old storage system worked out pretty soon otherwise this is going to be mayhem so with all of that now in place all of our storage systems working it's time to get back to the snowy area and get things finished off there the only thing left to do is the hotel so i thought since i'm giving this to you guys as a world download i'd really appreciate to see the ideas that you have decorating this place and then posting them on my discord so i can see and if i really like them i might even copy them into the world so that saves me a job having to do this today but there is one more thing i'd like to address before we end this phase and that is poor old nigel who's been stuck in this hill for what has been a very long time now nigel is my express locomotive that got put away in here because i made him pull freight and that seemed to upset a lot of people but i can't just leave him here forever and as much as I don't have a job for him to do right now, because there still aren't any passengers in this world, I'm sure we can think of something when we start the next phase. So out you come, Nigel, out of this dark and dingy hole, and let's get him somewhere that he can just chill out, relax, and enjoy life. No, not back in your tunnel, mate.
until we're ready for him. Oh, Nigel, if only we had a bunch of passengers you could pull, but that's never going to happen. So flying back to our snowy area, I'm sure we're going to have a bunch more jobs to do over here when we get to the next phase. But for now, that oh my goodness, what's all this? It's, it's a bunch of passengers waiting for a train. But where do all of you guys want to go to? What's that? The new area? If only we had a train that could take them there. Nigel! Nigel, I've got a job for you, bud! 